Welcome to Food in a Flash, I'm Sharon Glass and today I've got some great ideas for quick bakes in the kitchen. We're making red velvet cupcakes, my favourite. Followed by pistachio cranberry biscotti, they really are easy. And we're finishing with some Toblerone muffins, so decadent to die for. As a self-taught cook and cooking teacher of 27 years, I have a passion for what I do. And as a mother, I know how rewarding it is to see my family happily tucking into a wonderful meal that I have prepared. I also know what it's like to be a busy mom and still have to think about getting dinner on the table. It's not always easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. That's why I started teaching and writing cookbooks to show people just how wonderful it can be to cook and enjoy and still have time and energy to do the important things in life. I hope I can get you to become confident in the kitchen, have fun and above all create some beautiful simple meals that you and your family will absolutely love. So today we're starting with my favorite red velvet cupcakes. These actually are quite interesting because they actually have cocoa and red food coloring. The first step is to beat some eggs with some sugar. We're going to beat that until it's really light and fluffy. Okay, that looks awesome. It's beautiful and fluffy and creamy. I'm just going to scrape the bowl down. It's important to do that because sometimes a lot of the ingredients remain at the bottom. Now I'm adding all the moist ingredients. So I have some buttermilk, about a half a cup for half the recipe. Okay, three quarters of a cup of sunflower oil. Half a teaspoon of bicarb. Whoops, a little bit of vinegar, white vinegar, just ordinary white spirit vinegar. And we're going to beat that. I'm not putting the food colouring in because it's the last thing we're going to add. So we're just going to let that blend and you don't need to overbeat it. Right, that's beautifully mixed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to sift the dry ingredients. Ordinary cake flour about a tablespoon of cocoa powder and I'm going to add a pinch of salt which just balances the sweetness. Cocoa often has lots of little pieces so we just need a little pinch of ordinary salt and let's just sift that quickly. Isn't that fun? Beautiful. Now I've got to change my beater because I'm adding flour, it's going to be a heavier mixture, so I'm going to change the beater to the, call it the K beater, add your dry ingredients, and why you need to sift is it adds air, it really, really does, in something like a cupcake, not in a biscotti where it's heavy and the whole mixture is heavy, but in something like this we want to add air so that it rises beautifully. So I'm only doing it to, to actually blend it, I'm not overbeating it. I'm going to scrape down once because I've got lots of bits and pieces on the side here. And you can see it's looking quite chocolatey. There are a few lumps so we need to get rid of those. Right, that's good. So now what I'm going to do is just take this out while I add my food colouring so that I can get right into the middle. So this gel, we need about three good squirts and the more you put in, the better it is. So if you can see it's really quite a, a thick gel, much more true red than the one that you buy in the bottle, which is why you need to use so much of the other one. Okay, let's beat that up. And you'll see this change into this amazing red And if you don't add enough, you're not going to get the real colour. Isn't that awesome? And I've pre-sprayed my muffin cups, which actually, even though they're going in the muffin cups, I find that if you spray them, they just peel off that much easier. 
So we don't want to fill them too much. The secret here is to rather underfill than overfill. So it's about a quarter of a cup measure and you'll get about 12 out of here. So these need about 20 to 25 minutes on 180 degrees in the oven. Middle rack always when you're baking. We want the air around to be the full, to give it the best rising. And if you have a quick fan oven, or a thermo fan, always turn at least 10 minutes into baking. I know one says never open the oven because the whole thing will drop, but we don't have egg whites here, so I'm not that worried. I need at least 10 minutes, 12 minutes of baking before I can open, but the back of the oven is very hot, so I always want to change it so that everything bakes evenly. Let's put those in the oven. I've already baked these so they have cooled and we're ready to make some cream cheese icing just to complete the whole thing. So the most important thing with cream cheese icing is to use a soft butter, unsalted always when you're baking, and we need to beat the cream cheese with the butter before we even think of adding the icing sugar to get that soft. The most important thing is to get a very good thick cream cheese because if it's not thick enough it's going to be so loose that the whole thing will not be able to be iced on top there. Because I softened that cream cheese and the butter, it's already easy to add the icing sugar, which I've sifted. I find there are lots of lumps in it, so if I don't sift it, I'm liable to get lumps in my icing as well. And this is a good 500 grams of icing sugar. You only need a half a cup of cream cheese, never more, because actually the cream cheese is just the base. Start off slow. So this takes a while because it needs to actually all be incorporated. We'll just let the dry ingredients mix in. If the mixture is a little bit soft, I always add some more icing sugar. Don't be shy because it's better to be firmer rather than too runny. That's beautiful. It's, it's firm, it's nice, it's fluffy. I've let it go for quite a long time. I'm just going to add a drop of vanilla. I never really measure vanilla, so it's always just a little bit, just for flavour. And this is just vanilla essence. Right, that's absolutely perfect. So now I like piping them. I think it looks so professional when you pipe them, but not everybody has a piping bag. So you could just uh, spread them on with a spatula if you like. I'm going to use my piping bag and I've got these fabulous disposable ones that you can buy at any baking store and they work beautifully because you can have them as big or as small as you like. So let's use the slightly bigger one with a nozzle in the bag like that. We always cut after we've put it in because we don't want to cut it too low down. So I'm going to cut it about there. That's about right. And then to fill your piping bag, you always fold it over like that so that I can get it right into the, into the middle. And if you can see how nice and thick and fluffy this is, that's the whole secret to a cream cheese icing. And then we can pull it up and the rest will go in. It's very important to fill the whole bag because you don't want to be opening it once you've actually filled it. Just scrape it off like that and then we'll just push it down. Twist the top like that so that I've got a good balance and I'm squeezing with my right hand and guiding with my left. Doesn't that look fabulous? It's actually not so difficult. Right, I've got some rose petals in the fridge. Let me get them and put them on top. And this will just complete the picture. So 
So it looks like it came out of the pastry shop. I've got my cake plate here. We're just going to grab them and pop them on ready for tea. Now I would keep these in the fridge because they have got cream cheese icing. If it's a hot day, you don't want them to, to melt. There we go, kids, just for you. Well, when we come back, we'll be making some cranberry pistachio biscotti. So easy, simple and delicious. Don't go away. Welcome back to Food in a Flash. We're going to be making some cranberry pistachio biscotti. They're so easy and quite delicious. Let's get them going. So I'm putting all the dry ingredients in the mix master. I have two and a half cups of cake flour, cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of bicarb. And I just want to mix them together. I'm going to add a pinch of salt as well. I always like to just neutralize or balance the flavors with that little bit of salt just to mix them. Okay, then I'm going to add my eggs. So I'm using two eggs today. A little bit of vanilla essence. And I'm just going to whisk them a little bit before I add them to the dry ingredients. What's nice about this recipe is that you can really change it to your own tastes. So you could actually do chocolate chips if you like, you could change the nuts and not use pistachios. Just be careful that the nuts are not too hard because sometimes your nuts, like almonds, are very hard and when you cut the biscuits it actually is harder to, um, to cut them. Okay, we're just going to beat this into a dough and if it's too moist I'm going to add a little bit more flour because I need to be able to pat it into a log. starting to come together and that's beautiful because I don't want it too dry. Right now I'm going to add my crisp cranberries and pistachios and these are dried cranberries and shelled pistachios not the salty kind and I never stand and, and shell those either you buy them <laughs> ready, ready shelled. And I'm going to be able to just stick it together with my hands. Okay. This is perfect. As you can see, it's easy to shape into a log. So if it were a little bit more moist, I would just use flour on my hands to shape it. I have prepared a baking tray. So I've just got a liner on here, which makes it easy to get them off. And all I'm going to do is make two or three logs as I see fit and basically just shape them into an oval shaped log. And I like to make them quite big and fat. So we'll probably do two here. You could do three. Just be, remember they are going to actually expand when they're baking. So I like them to be quite fat because I want nice long biscotti when they're finished. So just put it onto a baking tray. I'm going to dust them with a little bit of bake of flour because it's easier to, to shape, like that. Just a little bit on my hands and then it just does, stops it from sticking. And then just shape it into like a snake, but a fat snake. Now I'm not worried that they're a little bit narrow because I know they're going to expand when they bake. They're going to need about a 160 degree oven, not too high because we don't want to burn them and we want them just to set. So as soon as they're ready, after about 25 to 30 minutes, you'll see that it's formed a nice crust. You're going to take them out and we're going to slice them. So this is one that I baked earlier. As you can see, 
It's perfect because when I lift it off that liner, it lifts easily. And what's nice is now I can slice them, and I like to slice them at an angle so that I get that beautiful long look. And I want to put them back in the oven now on 120 degrees, so I've lowered the temperature of the oven. And I want to make them into almost like a rusk where you dry them out completely so that I can have them with coffee in the morning. So you can see that you get a really, really nice colour from these with the, with the cranberries. But raisins work beautifully as well. And they must all be flat on the baking tray. Because if they stack, they're not going to dry out. And just leave them in as long as you need to. Just as soon as they are dried out, they can cool and then pop them in a Tupperware. Let's put them in the oven on a low temperature to dry out. These are delicious, crispy and baked. Perfect for my cappuccino. You can see how dry they are. When we come back, we're going to be making some Toblerone muffins to go with the red velvet cupcakes as well. Don't go away. Welcome back to Food in a Flash. We're finishing off our quick bakes with some Toblerone muffins. They are really, really scrumptious and full of calories. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sift the dry ingredients. I have some flour, two and a half cups of flour, a tablespoon of baking powder, and some caster sugar, half a cup of caster sugar. And I always sift in a muffin or a cupcake because they need to be light and airy. Dry ingredients first. With my fabulous sifter again. Straight into the mixing bowl. And then I'm going to add some ground almonds. And we're just going to mix it together in the machine just to get them completely mixed. Perfect. Now I've got some melted butter, an egg, and some buttermilk. And I'm just going to mix those all together, add it to my dry ingredients, just whisk them lightly, and basically that's the whole muffin. It's as simple as that. Now the secret to a muffin, my daughter told me last night, she said that's why my lemon poppy seed muffins never work. I overbeat them. She says, you see, I'm mom, I'm learning all these tricks. I didn't even know I had to bake in the middle of the oven. So I said, well, you see now you say, why should I help you? And when she does, she learns all these things. So the secret with a muffin is never to over mix it. We literally are mixing it just to get it com combined. Because if you over beat it, you're actually breaking the whole thing down. So we want it a little bit lumpy. Perfect. Can you see? It's still got lumps. It's still got a little bit of dry ingredients. That's absolutely fine. Now I've got Toblerone, absolutely decadent chopped into quite big chunks because when it melts I like it to actually melt into the actual muffin and you can keep a few just for the top if you like and we're just going to combine that that's it so that takes about five minutes these also come from one of my baking supplies they're fabulous because you can serve straight into them and they're lined with a, with a, a coating and the mixture you can see is a lot different to that red, red velvet cupcake. So we're going to fill it quite full. Perfect. I never really measure perfectly, but I know that they need to be just over half full. Okay. Perfect. So we'll just top them with a little chunk of Toblerone that can melt in beautifully and a little bit in this one and some crumbs in that one and they bake on 180 degrees for about 20 minutes 
maybe 25, but 20 minutes on a muffin is absolutely perfect in the middle of the oven. They need nothing else, no icing, just a little bit of sifted icing sugar on top when they come out. Let's put them in to bake. So I've baked these Toblerone muffins for about 20 minutes. They've cooled. I'm just going to put them on my platter and dust them with a little bit of icing sugar. That will finish them off. So we're finishing off our baking with Toblerone muffins, red velvet cupcakes, some cranberry pistachio biscotti, all delicious to have with a cup of tea. Please join me next week when I've got some great ideas for kids dinners including barbecued chicken kebabs, some grilled fish fingers and a layered sorbet terrine. Thanks for watching. You've seen her do it on TV. Now learn to cook with Sharon at one of her fun interactive cooking workshops. From the very basics of cooking to full dinner party meals or cakes and bakes, Sharon Glass has a cooking class or workshop just for you. For more information or to book a spot, visit www.thehomechannel.co.za and follow the link to Food in a Flash. And for one lucky Home Channel viewer, Sharon is offering an interactive workshop for you and seven of your friends. All you have to do to enter is log on to our website, fill in the online entry form and you could stand a chance to win this great prize. Entries for the competition close on Sunday the 15th of July.